In this movie, we're going to talk about file management. And I'd like to take a few minutes and go over with you some of the topics that we'll be covering throughout our discussions with file management. First of all, we'll take a look at our file naming convention. Now, naming conventions are a little bit different in a Linux environment than they are in a Windows environment. So we'll take a look at some differences there and even some similarities. As we move forward, we'll talk about file types, the different types of files that are recognized by the Linux operating system. We'll also talk about some basic file management, some ways that you can move about in the file system, work with files, rename them, and actually manage the individual files that exist inside of Linux. We'll also talk about a fancy name for shortcuts, hard and symbolic links. These are basically just various ways to make a shortcut in the Linux operating system. And finally, we'll talk about searching for files that allows you to actually go through the file system and look for a file based on its name. So let's start out and take a look at the file naming convention rules that are set for us by the Linux operating system. Now first of all, there are a lot of flexibilities here. So you're not as limited in the naming conventions as you are in other operating systems such as Macintosh or Windows. Now the big benefit here is, in order for Linux to recognize the file for what it is, it doesn't have to have a file extension. So the great thing about that is, you can pretty much name your files anything you want, and they'll still function exactly as if you had given them their specific file extension. So a couple of rules here. First of all, we can have no periods, multiple periods. Generally, the Linux operating system frowns upon the use of spaces, mostly because when you're performing searches, Linux and many other operating systems, in fact, will stop at a space, thinking that it's the end of the file name or the end of the text string. So it's important that we substitute spaces for underscores. And that's actually the case in most programming languages, most web languages, most database languages, as well as in limited operating systems. Now Linux also removes a requirement that file names have to start with letters. So we don't have to worry about that old restriction of starting it out with an alpha character. So we can go ahead and use numbers or alphabet letters, it doesn't really matter. And as I mentioned before, you're not limited by file extensions. So we can leave those off although it is generally a good idea to go ahead and plug a file extension in mostly for recognition purposes. The operating system knows what it is, but you should make sure that you and anyone else can tell what it is as well. Now, there's actually a method of somewhat hiding files by preceding the file name with a period. It really doesn't hide the file, it just highlights it differently in the shell and basically changes the attribute so that it's not always recognized. Now remember, upper and lower case is also not a restriction for us. We can interchange those as necessary, but always remember that case is important when it comes to file names. In a Windows environment, you can't have two files named the same even if the case is different. In the Unix and Linux environment, the actual case denotes a completely separate file. Now we're still restricted with the 255 character file name length, which is a restriction in nearly all operating systems. So let's look at some options that are available to us with file naming. So I just want to kind of take a moment and move into our Linux operating system to see what we can do using these naming conventions. So right now, in the root folder, I've got a couple of files here. And I'm just going to create an example file. As you can see here, I have my example file with no file extension, where it's actually a .cfg file. And if I wanted to, I could actually take a look at the file and notice that Linux automatically recognizes the type of file that it is. It says, okay, this must be a text file and allows me to open it properly. So another example of this would be if I wanted to take my example file 
and give it a couple of dots or spaces. As you can see here, it accepted all of the dots in pretty much any combination. A lot of operating systems would reject that, but Linux doesn't mind at all. And yet again, we can actually grab it and view it as if it already knew what the extension was. So as you can see, there are a couple of options available to us as far as naming convention is concerned. But always remember, for user readability and usability purposes, we're going to want to keep those file extensions and make our case consistent throughout our file naming convention.